Hello. Today's video is going to be on the Steelers logo. So to start with, I have a shirt that's been soaked in soda ash. It's been spun out, so it's just barely damp. And I have centered the tee, but I've also folded half of it inside so that I have the front and the back are separate. This is going to uh, allow me to put the logo on the front, but the back will be solid, and you'll see that here in a bit. So what I've done is made a couple marks here just to give an estimate, give me an estimate of how big I'm making the circle. So what I started with was my fingers, uh, I usually do about, when I'm doing an image, about three fingers right below the collar. So I put my fingers down and that comes out to six inches here. So I'm going to do a 12 inch circle around here. So what I've done then is transfer that six inches up here and then I made another mark at one inch and this here is going to be for the gray circle so it has a black line around it and then there's gray in the middle and then the center is white with those diamonds and those diamonds is something we're going to paint in later with thick dye so let's get started uh, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is draw on the circle so I'm going to use my handy dandy string here. I just put a little slip knot in there, tighten that down, and then I just hold that in place where I want the circle. So I'm going to draw the inner circle first. So I'll pull the string tight and pinch my fingernail down right here so that I have the string stretched out at full length. And then you just mark out your circle main thing is just keeping that pin straight up and down and keeping your fingernail pinched right in that same spot there and then we're going to move out to the second line so I'll put the pin down pinch it with my finger and then we're going to draw the second line so there's my circle we're going to fold that up but we're going to fold just the front of the t-shirt which is why Instead of just folding in half, I pulled the front forward and then tucked the other side in. And there's a video on folding a t-shirt in half. So if you'll just go look that up if you haven't done it before. But that just gives you your front of your t-shirt and the back of your t-shirt. Nice one place here. And then the two sleeves are tucked into each other over here. Okay. So now the next part that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw on, I'm going to do a V on this. And I want to leave enough space here so that when I fold this and I fold this, they're not combining or competing for uh, t-shirt space here. So make sure you leave, you know, a few inches. I got, what, four fingers worth there, or let's see, we got about uh, three and a half inches there. So I'm going to draw my next line on here. So this is going to be my V down to the bottom. So I'm going to fold the V first just so we get the whole thing because this here is going to be on both the front and the back of the t-shirt. So I'm just going to accordion fold that all the way up to the top here. So. Okay, we'll tie that off.
so that's my V and that's going to be front and back and now I'm going to fold my circles but for this I'm going to pull just the front of that forward here so what I can do is just slowly gently pull on this here you don't want to pull your folds out over here so just gently kind of pull the t-shirt apart there to give yourself plenty of room to work and you can even kind of tuck that bit of the shirt back underneath itself just so that you can fold straight on the table sometimes the accordion folding is easier to do on the table and then we're going to fold this and I'm just going to go ahead and fold both of these at the same time just so that I can keep track of both of them Like I say, I, this, I just made this here one inch wide, or just over one inch. And remember this here is just one layer of the t-shirt folded in half, just the front that we're folding. Now we're going to go back to folding the rest of this up. So everything below the line is going to be yellow. Everything above the line is going to be black. And the line itself, I'm going to make it gray. So maybe what I'll do is mark off just a little bit more area here so that I can have a bit of a gray line in between the black and the yellow. But just to get their three colors, the yellow, the black, and the gray in there, or just separating it off, yellow, gray, and black. So this here is going to be that whole V. It's going to be in black and we kind of wadded up the rest of the t-shirt underneath so I'm just going to kind of straighten that out just a little bit but I still want to leave my circle because this here part is going to stay white so you just want to make sure you separate all the pieces in here and I try to smooth that out a little bit the layers just so I can kind of crinkle that up Remember, we got the sleeves in there too, so that adds extra layers in. Okay, let's tie that part off. So, there we have it. This is the circle pulled forward on just the front of the T. This here is the gray V going down. This will be black. This will be yellow. So stay tuned and we'll get this dyed up. Okay, I'm all set up for dyeing. So we're going to tackle this. The first thing I'm going to do is take care of this white area here. So just to try to keep it white, I'm going to use just some water that it's been slightly thickened. It's not the, the really thick water, but just a little bit thickener in there. And what I do is I apply it to where I want the white to stay. And that makes it wet. And being wet is not going to want to pull the dye towards it. If you just covered this up and put your gray dye on here, this drier fabric is going to try to pull that dye or that liquid down into here. It wants to equalize everything. So if you get this wet with just plain water, then you're going to cut down on that effect. Now if you add too much gray dye, then you're still going to have some dye spilling over, but you just want to watch how much of the dye you use and it should work out just perfect for you. Okay. Oh, I forgot to draw my lines. So, from the other side, 
this is where my lines were. So in here is going to be gray. And then same thing on this. Let's see, right there. 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 And there. So this here is going to be gray. And that's going to be gray. We're going to leave that white. Flip this back over. So what I do to keep something white, first off is I soak it down with uh, water. The next thing is I'll put a plastic bag or I'll put a rubber glove over top of it. That just to make sure that it doesn't pick up any little splashes of dye that might be on the table. Just purely accidental stuff. So what I'm going to do is just wrap a rubber band around this plastic and that will just help keep that clean for later. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is, well let's start out with the black. So I'm going to outline this gray line with the thick black dye. And I do have a video on how to make the thick black dye, or it's not just for black, you can make any color dye thick. It's just a matter of making the thick water and then add and dye to it whatever color you want so that you have a, a thick dye. And this here stops it from spreading so much, but it also doesn't allow it to seep in as deep. So usually what I'll do is I'll take a cuticle pusher, uh, just a metal tool here, and I can push on that black line and help the dye soak down inside the t-shirt. And this is just regular gray dye, it's not thickened or anything. Okay, the top part, I'm going to do that in black. And then the bottom part in yellow. So I'm going to go into fast forward mode here as I finish this up. I'm going to let this set up for 48 hours. I'm going to wash it and then I'll be back to finish the rest of this video with the logo that we have saved off here in white. Thank you for watching. Okay, so here's the Steelers tee so far. We had tied up the circle before and left this white. This here is gray. Got my gray lines here. Got my yellow. Black on the back. It's just a, a solid black here well patterned. So what the next step before I do the dye painting I put this over top of a board just to separate the front and the back of the shirt so that when I'm spraying it with soda ash it's not soaking through to the back. Also when I paint on it I don't want the, the dye to penetrate to the back of the shirt so just make sure you stick something in between uh, the t-shirt the front and the back. So anyways, when I get to this point, what I do is I just have a bottle of soda ash in a mister and I just will spray that until it's nice and damp. And I'm just spraying just the area where I want to put my dye at. So I'll mist that and then I'm going to let this sit and dry once this is completely dry. 
Then I'll go ahead and cut my little diamond shapes out and do the three diamonds in there. Anyways, that's it for now. We'll be back in a bit with to finish this off. Okay, we're back. So, just a little bit ago, I sprayed this with uh, soda ash and I let set out to dry and once it was completely dry the next thing I did was measure how big this inner circle is. Uh, it was nine inches here so I called up the Steelers logo on my computer I enlarged the image until it was right at nine inches and then I used a piece of paper and traced half of the image well full image because I fold the paper in half but I traced half of the image of this here because then I knew that at nine inches this here would fit in there. So I cut this out and then I laid it down and then just using colored markers, washable markers, I went ahead and just scribbled around the edges to leave a line here. So where I'm going to actually paint is just the white area inside these lines here. But that's a nice quick way to to make a line I just laid this down and then just colored over the the edges here and moved it around to each place and I have my images the next thing that I need to do is make the actual die that I'll be painting with so I'm gonna move this out of the way and we're gonna move on to mixing the, the paints here so I'm not trying to match the colors exactly, so I'm just using lemon yellow, uh, royal blue, and fire red. And then I have my thickened water. When I make my thick black dye, this is what I have. And I take just a little bit out and make the dye, but I usually have a half a jug of this sitting around. So what I'm going to do is pour just a little bit into the paint tray here. And it doesn't take much to paint all of these so I'm probably making way too much so that's my thickened water and there's a video on how to make thick black dye in that video you'll see how to make this thickened water so what I have here is just a paint tray with three globs of the stuff in there and what I'm going to do is just add just a little tiny sprinkling. I'm not doing a whole bunch and I probably should put my dust mask on for this but since it's just the tiniest little bit so I just have just a little bit in the scoop here pour that into there. So that's the red wipe that out real quick and just the same thing I just use just a, just a tiny bit of dye since it's just one little glob there and I rinse out my little teaspoon in between or wipe it out with a rag and dry it off but this is how I make the dye for painting. So depending on how much you need, you can make bigger amounts. I do have little bottles. Sometimes, oh, here let me set that right there. Sometimes I'll make a larger amount if I'm going to do a lot of painting. And then that way I have plenty of extra. Although it's only going to last for a couple weeks sitting there. So you don't want to make up too much of this. Once I have that done, then I just have a pin that has a, a round in on let's see, a round in on it, and I just kind of mix that dye up. So I just kind of squash in there and stir that up good.
And you just want to make sure you mix it up good. I try to grind that powder. That's why you have a rounded end pin. Just so I can kind of grind that powder up to make sure it's all dissolved in there. Okay, so now we got the shirt back and uh, I have this here on a board. So the board is in between the front and the back. Uh, you can slip a piece of paper, plastic, you definitely need something in there. Sometimes I'll use the uh, wax paper and you can iron it on. But you need something in between just so that the dye doesn't soak through to the back of the shirt. So now we're ready to start painting here. And then it, it basically is just what it sounds like. I'm going to paint with dye on the t-shirt the here. And I'm just going to fill in just in the white areas here. Like I say, I drew this on here in such a manner so that the, the blue was on the outside. The white is the actual design here. So we're just going to paint and get this done. And I'm just using a, a fine tip brush right now while I get into these points and then I'll move to a bigger brush for the rest of it. And I'll probably do fast forward more mode. Okay, and there's the Steelers logo. Uh, and if you want to put the word in, you can do the same thing. Um, what I usually do is use my light board, and I'll print out the logo at the size that I need. I kind of measure it out, see how much space I have. And then on my printer, I set it up and print it out the size I need, and then I tape it underneath, and then I slip my light board in the middle here and then I can paint the letters on so but for now this here's the logo and I'll be back with the results thank you oh and after I paint I let this set for about two days I don't try to cover it with plastic I just keep it in a cool room not cold but just anyways I'll let this sit for a couple days and then it'll be ready to wash Okay, it's time to wash this painted design. So this here is all dry. Like I said, I let it set up for a couple days. And now it's time to rinse it. So what I do is I set the water on cold. And I like to get the whole design kind of in there. Sometimes if it's too big, you can't really do that. But I can also feel the, the dye on there. It's, you know, it applies a little bit of a thickness. So I like to put cold water on it and just kind of rub it and scrape some of that excess dye out of there before I put it into the wash. And you can see the washable marker has already come off of there. So it doesn't take much to get the washable marker out. And once I can kind of feel that there's no more dye on top of the, the surface there, then that's when I think it's ready to go in the washer. So 
I'll squeeze this out and put it in the washer and then I'll have the results at the end.